In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about PNG files, what they are, how to work with them, and indeed how to create them in Photoshop. So we've touched on JPEG files, which are really, really common format that you'll see on websites. So we've touched on JPEG files already and how you can save them out from your PSD files in Photoshop. If you're looking at most websites and seeing images on the page, they're for the most part JPEG files. There are another couple of formats that are used on web page, but 99% of the web is JPEG. So what is PNG? Well, PNG is unique because PNG can actually store transparency information. So as well as storing the image, it can also store transparency similar to a layer mask in Photoshop. And then you can use those on web pages and have transparent images on web pages so the viewers can kind of see through the image and uh, see the background, what's behind the PNG files. They use a little bit more file size than JPEG, so it's kind of a trade-off, um, but the main benefit is the transparency. So from a Photoshop perspective, PNGs are useful because you'll sometimes want to create them for people with transparency, and indeed you may find PNG images on the web that you want to use in your documents. So. We'll start this by finding a PNG image and bring it into Photoshop so you can see what it looks like and how it behaves and a couple of little uh, differences. So if you search for PNG, there's a number of websites you can go to that, where you can sort of download any kind of PNG file. So I've found this PNG image uh, of a face mark, very appropriate for our COVID filled times. And I've just saved that in a folder here on my hard drive. So you can see it's got a file name and it ends with .png. You can open a PNG file in Photoshop. So if I switch back to Photoshop over here, I can either get a file open or as I prefer to do, I kind of get Windows Explorer or Finder if you're on Mac and simply drag the file in. What that's doing is it's opening the PNG file up in Photoshop as a document. Notice it's, it is a PNG file, it's not a PSD file. So if we start adding layers to this and making changes, we're gonna be kind of at a crossroads because when we come to save the document, if we wanna keep the layers, we've either gotta save this as a PSD or we've gotta collapse all those layers together and then we'll be able to overwrite the PNG file. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the checkerboard effect is behind this image. So that transparency uh, kind of cue that Photoshop has to say, hey, there's, there's transparent parts to this layer, uh, is that checkerboard. So what that means is obviously the main image here is what's visible and the parts you're seeing outside of that uh, are invisible. Where this becomes useful, obviously, is if you were working on a new document, Say we were doing an Instagram post, 1080 by 1080, and we'll fill that with a color. Let's do a kind of yellow. And you may wanna add this uh, face mask to your Instagram post. So I can flip back to the PNG, and then what I'm gonna do is drag the tab out, if you remember me showing you this, all the way back at the start of the course with the user interface tutorial. And I can have that PNG file just kind of float as a window here. And now what I can do with the layer selected is click, hold, and drag this. And you can see how the uh, face mask part is moving around. Notice the checker part isn't. And then I can drag that out and onto my yellow Instagram post. So notice how the cursor's changed because it's saying, hey, you're about to drag something from one document to the other. And then I can let go of the mouse over my new document. And lo and behold, there's our face mask appearing on the new post. So this is where PNGs are useful. If you find PNGs online, sometimes I work with little icons, things like say Twitter, YouTube logos. And if you can get those as PNG files, it's useful to drag those in like this. And then you've already got the transparency. You don't have to worry about doing cutouts with quick selection or anything else. Just another note back in the PNG file here, you wanna be careful that you know which document you're working on when you work between two documents like this. So if I click over back in the Instagram post, notice how the layers change back. And so that means 
the active document is that yellow Instagram post. So we're looking at the layers there versus if I click in this floating window and it's now switched to the one layer there for the PNG file. So now I'm gonna cover how you can create your own PNG. So to do this, I'm gonna start a new document. And when we do a new document, it doesn't really matter what the size is, um, but the important setting here is this one, background contents. So when you start a new document in Photoshop, uh, it's giving you an option for what you want the background layer to be filled with. The background layer in Photoshop is kind of a special layer. Uh, Photoshop understands the presence of a background layer a little bit differently from all the other layers. It'll make more sense in a second. Uh, suffice to say, the background layer is the lowest you can go in terms of layer. But what we wanna do here in background content is change this to transparent. So I can do that, click OK. Now we're gonna get a new document up, 1080 by 1080, and it's transparent. So if I zoom in and out, you can see that checkerboard is staying where it is. And we've got this new layer here, uh, which we can draw on. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna use the rectangular marquee tool, which we covered in a previous video, and just click and drag a rectangle here. And then I'm gonna fill this going up to the edit menu with fill. Shift F5, you're going to start to remember as you use this more and more. And we might just pick a color to fill in here. I'm just going to go with a red. And so now we've got a red box on our transparent background. I'm going to deselect Control D. And then I'm also going to add some type. So I'm going to click on the type tool and just write something like hello. That's white text, so I'm gonna press Control A to select all the text, come up to the color picker here for the text, and I'm just gonna change that to black. So now I've got a text layer and the box layer here on a transparent background. So the first thing I would do is save this as a PSD, because if I wanna come back to this and work on it, I wanna keep the layers, keep everything together, so I'm gonna want my PSD file. So I'm gonna use my little demo folder here and call this transparency test.psd. So not PNG, PSD. But now what I can do is save this as a PNG file. So if I go up to File, Save As, we're back in our same folder. This time I'm going to choose the PNG option here. Click Save. And there's an option here, which is just about how the data in the PNG file is saved. So you pretty much wanna go with a large file size for faster saving, unless you're intending to use this on the web, in which case you'd probably wanna choose smallest size. So we'll click okay on that. And if we go over to our folder, we've now got a new PNG file. So exactly the same as the white mask that we found on the web, I've got this PNG file. Now, if I close down the Photoshop file, I'm gonna close down the mask, and this time I'm gonna drag in our new PNG file. So I'm gonna click that Windows Explorer and drag it in. Now, when I drag this in, notice what I'm doing. I'm dragging it up to the tabs up the top here. So by doing that, it's opening this up as a new document in a new tab. That's slightly different than if I had dragged it onto the document here. So watch what happens when I do that. So if I get the file and I drag it onto this document, Photoshop is actually placing this as a new layer on the Instagram post that we're working on. So this is a subtle difference between how you can import files. You can either drag them into their own document and work on them separately, or you can actually get files and drag them onto existing documents and they'll load as a new layer like this. So this is really, really useful to know because if you are working with uh, a library of assets, PNG files, other things, and you've got them in Windows Explorer here, it's just a case of dragging them in and they'll load in as a new layer like this and then you're ready to go. Flipping back to our PNG file, you can see what's happened here is the PSD version of this has saved. We've now got one layer that combines both the text and the box. And obviously they're not editable because this is now a PNG file, which we could put on a web page, um, share, etc. So 
that pretty much explains everything. There's one more concept I want to touch on with PNGs, which is working with the actual transparency uh, that's used within the PNG file. We touched on transparent layers when we looked at layer masks. So one thing you might want to do with a PNG file is actually access its transparent data. So the way you can do this is if you have the layer here in your PSD file and you hold control or command down and click the layer, what you'll see is Photoshop loads a selection based on everything that's visible in the layer. Now, I'm going to show you a trick. With the selection on screen like this, I can create a new layer with the new layer button down here. Still got my selection on screen. It doesn't know what layer it's on. Now I can go to Edit Fill. I'm going to choose a different color. Maybe we'll go on Aqua. Click OK. Deselect, Control D. Now I've got a new layer that I filled in with blue based on the selection and the transparency from that original layer. So this is useful to know if you just want to work with the transparency. Probably more useful, say, if I was working on this document and I wanted to get access to the transparency uh, information from this PNG. So I could do the same thing here. Hold Control or Command, click on that layer, and now I've got that selection to work with in this document. So that wraps up this little tutorial on PNGs. I've covered how you can create them, how you can import them, a couple of different ways there, and some of the little nuances and quirks that happen when you work with PNGs inside Photoshop. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber-only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.